A lot of our older buildings provide really rich cultural heritage and they make up the character that is Seattle. Some of my favorite places um, to shop and, and, and be in the Pioneer Square and the International District, uh, Belltown and the University District. We'd like to protect that character instead of potentially lose it in an earthquake. Unreinforced masonry buildings are, are one type of construction that is particularly vulnerable in earthquakes. They are prone to collapse, they are prone to, to injure and kill people. Um, most of the deaths uh, that we see around the world are because of uh, URM buildings. And, we, and the, the point that we're trying to do here is, is save lives. We've all seen a lot of pictures of damage in earthquakes from Christchurch and Mexico and other places with similar building codes. If you wait for the earthquake to take care of the problem, it takes care of it in a very vicious way. Seventy-five percent of businesses don't reopen if they can't get the doors back open within a certain amount of time. And the amount of, of repair that would need to be done if you have major building damage could be a very long time. It makes it harder for the community to recover economically and psychologically. Because we don't know when the next earthquake is going to happen, you really want to start thinking about trying to get it done as soon as possible. This is the main floor of the Mod Building. The building was built in 1889 out of uh, bricks, basically, unreinforced masonry. We have added two large shear walls and three column footings to support the floors above. The two shear walls are to support the, the large steel frames. When we bought it, we always planned on doing seismic upgrades because we know if there's an earthquake, it could be devastating, and the only way to mitigate that is to brace the building. The one issue is underneath liquefaction of soil where the, the shaking turns the soil into soup, basically, and so it can't hold it up. Uh, fortunately, we're in pretty good shape there, but what another common thing is for the old floors are not attached to the walls. They're just sitting in pockets. The beams are sitting in uh, brick pockets. Just gravity is holding them in. So if the wall moves at all, the floor can cave in and the wall can peel away and fall off. We actually have 45 staff members up there, including ourselves, and it's about our safety, most definitely. Uh, we know the building can fall down in a big earthquake. Now it's safer to stay in the building. Some people may say, why not just wait? And, and cross your fingers and hope that nothing happens. And you know, there a lot of, I think there's a lot of building owners in that camp. We got a letter from the city of Seattle indicating that we were a URM building or unreinforced masonry building. And we knew that that would be very expensive. And so we thought we would just wait and maybe it would go away, but it didn't. We kept getting the same letters. In 2016, I was notified by Four Culture um, that there was a grant opportunity that included seismic retrofits. So that was a big motivator. The other big motivator was a fear of loss, that if there was an earthquake, that everyone's predicting that the building would be damaged or collapse, injuring our tenants, and you know we'd lose our investment. Be prepared for the unexpected and build that into your budget, because if you're gonna take a historic building and open it up, you're gonna find surprises. When we opened up the roof structures, there was a lot of dry rot. When we opened up the whole parapet, the parapet, all the brick were loose. So we have to relay a lot of uh, brick on the parapet. Understand that there are going to be hidden conditions and your initial construction cost is only usually going to go up. I'll tell you, it was, it was interesting because by the nature of our work, we felt it was important to, uh, to temporarily uh, move offices. We needed to vacate the, the main floor of the building to do the retrofit. 
is something that people need to think about because of noise and vibration and dust. Communicate clearly how this might impact your business um, would be the one thing I'd recommend. And I think in the end, we might have been okay staying put and just doing a lot of dusting before the work day started. I would say that you build a great project team. Mostly you need a structural engineer. Make them your best friends. <laughs> Once you do that, you go in for, to the city for permitting. I way underestimated for the building permit. Uh, there, this is a, a big backlog right now because of so much construction in the city. And then you hire a contractor, assuming you've got financing in order somewhere, uh, to come do it. I'm glad to have it behind me because series, I, it took a lot of time to stay on top of everything. I don't know if she realizes how grateful we are that this is not something she had to do and I feel like she wants to do it not only for the building but for all of us and that's a really good feeling. Watch CityStream Thursday nights at 7 on the Seattle Channel, or get video on demand and podcasts anytime at seattlechannel.org.